as kids listened to the AM radio, just like everybody else did. We um, listened to a lot of different things. We had uh, choir music, we had opera, you know, things that you would hear in stores, you know, everything like that. But one of the things that we did do was spend a lot of time in the same room together growing up being sent to our rooms, <laughs> you know, uh, we weren't allowed to watch a lot of TV and stuff like that. So we kind of developed our own way of creating things so that we probably thought we were sounding like someone that we heard on the radio when we weren't. Bad for me, the knowledge that you're 
are going mad for me. I feel certain my friends would be glad for me. But it's bad for me. It's so good for me, so new for me, to see someone in such a stew for me. And when you say you'll do all you could for me, it's so good for me, it's bad for me. I felt till you whisper to me, completely left on the shelf. But since you started to woo me, I'm just crazy about myself. No matter however appealing, I still have a feeling it's bad for me. It's so sweet for me, it's well for me, to feel that you're going through hell for me. Yet no matter however appealing, I still have a feeling. When Maggie and Terry were singing, I am substantially younger than they are, and I was in high school, and I was always very big fans of theirs, and uh, I was invited to participate in their travels a lot. So I never had the thought that I would be singing with them, because I never sang. That wasn't really my interest. And then when they came back to New York, we were all kind of floundering around, um, had jobs that we were not particularly happy with and needed some sort of creative outlet, I guess. And we started singing Christmas carols on the street. We really arranged them, just the three of us that year, I think it was. And then from there, we, we took out songs like the Hammond song and Runs in the Family that Terry, or and the married men, Maggie and Terry, had written earlier. And we just started working on them, and we were singing in the street. Then someone asked us to play at a club, and that we started playing at the clubs, and that then we built a following, and it just all happened from there. I sit down on the train with my big pocketbook, the guitar, and a sugar-free drink. I wipe the sweat off of my brow with the side of my arm. And I take off all that I can. I am trying not to have a bad day. Now everybody knows the way that is. Even though my baggage and I are using up a two-person seat, I'm not trying to be funny, but the guy who sits down next to me is even bigger than that. We are overflowing out of the seat, and I can't look at him, he doesn't look at me. Once you step on, you might never get Party 
after all we have to sit here and he's even drinking a beer i want to ask him what's his name but i can't cause i'm so afraid of him that phrase, the largest Elizabeth in the world, in my journal about six months earlier, and I was leafing through and saw that phrase, and sat down and wrote the entire song in about 15 minutes. And I've always thought that that song sort of really came from somewhere else and came through me. And at the time I was doing it, I felt like I was just doing sort of an exercise with words and jamming a bunch of words into... Um, into a line and also with chords, using different chords that I had never really used before. And when it was done and I read it, I realized that it, it had a lot of things in it that it was saying. This is a uh, song about, um, against an anti-war song that um, also doubles as a, a science fiction number <laughs> about an anorexic person. It's called The Largest Elizabeth in the World. One, two, one, two, three. Didn't you ever feel like the largest Elizabeth in the world? Usually at a time when the boy is oblivious to the girl. I read in the paper the other day this has been happening to everybody more and more. But they still haven't figured out what it is that it is happening for Slow down, slow down, slow down Wouldn't you like to feel like yourself After suffering so many years, years, years Ooh, You were asked to the party by somebody else You wouldn't be sitting home in tears Maybe you're one of those interesting people Who don't want to they get their best work done by keeping themselves in the house off the street and away from the scene when it's time for the rest to have fun. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Come on, slow down, slow down. They say the world's over.
we'd like to do a, a little love song for you now, but it's the kind of love that's after that initial romantic part. You know, that part has kind of fizzled out, you know, but it's before the real hatred sets in. <laughs> tell you this um, you know we we meet a lot of very strange people doing our job 
But uh, probably the, the strangest person who ever like, came backstage or anything like that was um, when we played in Washington, D.C., and uh, President Reagan came <laughs> to our show. <laughs> I mean, it was really <laughs> pretty weird, you know? I mean, <laughs> we, well, we didn't know that he was such a big fan of ours or anything like that. And um, they told us before the show, and we got, like, really nervous and all that. And then um, after the show, sure enough, he came back, and he had this, like, bunch of men that came back with him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he said hi, and we said hi. And, and then he left, and um, <laughs> it was pretty quick, but still. And these men stayed and said that the reason, well, it turned out, you know, he's not really that big of a fan of yours. He's not really that familiar with your music. But he heard that we had this song that, um, I know this sounds really strange, but he wanted to use as like a campaign song <laughs> to reach the younger people because I guess he thought he had a problem there or something. <laughs> but he was going to... Uh, use this song like on the TV and stuff like that, but uh, we thought we were maybe going to make some money out of doing this, but we uh, realized that the man was saying uh, donation, and so there was no money involved for us, and I think Terry said, um, um, well, gee, thanks a lot, but we really don't like to get political about our music, you know, and, and well, anyway, they, they just left and we didn't well we just played in Washington again and they uh, you know no one from the government came <laughs> so but I, I still think it's an interesting story and this next song is the song that he was interested in using it's called want not want not <laughs> one two three four want not want a true love I wish there was a great art I wish there always was enough
think that a lot of times people laugh when I have no intention of being funny. Like, for example, in the song Nerds, to me, that song is about something that has caused me great pain in my life. And people think it's a joke. And so something is wrong there. But, some, you know, it can be misunderstood. One, two, three, four. I'm so glad I am one. I started singing in um, a club in Greenwich Village where a man came and made us an offer to go on tour over in Ireland, playing in his chain of clothing stores that he owned over there. <laughs> he wanted us to um, be in the window among the mannequins to make it more lively a scene. <laughs> we were very nervous about leaving but we had no other offers to work, so we quickly said yes, and um, then began to worry about the trip. This song, which is called The Troubles, is about the worry.
it upon my return. We're going away to Ireland soon. We're going away to Ireland, Ireland. Ireland soon, Ireland soon. We'll try not to get in the way of the guns, as we always do. Try not to get in the way of the guns soon. We're flying across the ocean soon. We're flying across the ocean, ocean, ocean soon, ocean soon. I dreamed I saw my guitar topple off onto the runway. Please be careful with my guitar, whoever you are. We're leaving behind our boyfriend soon. We're leaving behind our boyfriends, boyfriends, boyfriends soon, boyfriends soon. I hope they have health food in Dublin and strawberry apricot pie. If they don't have those things in Dublin, we'll probably die. We're going away to Ireland, Ireland. This is kind of, that was like the first improvisational part of the show. And um, we're going to continue now with an experimental piece that we 
fool around with sometimes. Hope it goes all right.
got a we got a song here, a song of hope for the future. Just in case anybody doesn't feel very well these days. Good luck to you. of ourselves in sort of the mainstream of pop and that we're attempting to be say a very successful very commercial phenomenon then I think we have a very hard struggle because it's in the nature of what we're doing that it's that's not its nature and I think that over the years um, we've sort of accepted that for example they probably aren't going to play our, ra our records on the radio because um, the radio has a very specific format and a very specific sounding music that they will play on, say, the commercial pop stations. Nevertheless, we've found an audience, or an audience has found us, and we've connected with our audience, and it's a great feeling, you know, to sort of, um, you know, buck the system in a way. <laughs>
Forever and ever, King of Kings. Forever.